Today in Draw My Life, the legend of Sleepy Hollow, the Headless Horseman. To understand the tale of the Headless Horseman, we have to go back to the time when the United States was in the powerhouse we know today, when New York was just a marketplace and settlements were clustered along river banks. In a peaceful, isolated valley surrounded by hills called Sleepy Hollow, macabre legends and evil stories coexist with its inhabitants. After the end of summer in 1784, Ichabod Crane arrived in this little valley from Connecticut. Ichabod has been assigned as a kindergarten professor. Being a very superstitious man, he came prepared, knowing all the stories told around the region. After settling in his new home, Ichabod took his first days in Sleepy Hollow to get to know the locals. He visited the school, met some students, and introduced himself to the local business owners. Despite the stories they told about the place, the people didn't seem strange or gruesome. He was especially struck by Katrina Van Tassel, daughter of the wealthy farmer. Ishabod fell madly in love with her and her fortune, but he wasn't the only one in the valley who had feelings for the young woman. Almost every man in Sleepy Hollow tried to woo her, especially Broom Bones, a tall, strapping young man and an excellent horseman who had been after her for several years. One night, Katrina's family threw a party at the house and invited the whole valley, including Ichabod. This was his chance to declare his love for the young lady. So he dressed up in his best clothes, rode in his old donkey, and headed to the party. Ichabod danced, drank, ate, and sang all night. He had a blast. After midnight, Brom began to tell scary stories and legends of the town. He intended to scare Ichabod so that Katrina would see that he was a coward and not a good fit as a couple. So he told the scariest legend he knew, the Headless Horseman. The rumor claims that he was a former soldier and that a cannonball ripped his head off. So his ghost wanders the valley at night, cutting off the heads of the foolish who wander into his territory. Until he finds one he likes, he carries a pumpkin with a carved face covered in fire when the rider gets angry. Ishabod shuddered in his seat and Brahm took the opportunity to mock him by calling him a coward and arguing that Katrina deserved a braver man. Offended, Ichabod assured him that there was no ghost and that he would ride into the valley to prove him wrong. He climbed his donkey and rode into the valley across the bridge that connected to the village. Despite his words, Ishabod was terrified and his paranoia grew each time he heard strange noises. The wind and the reeds sounded like screams to him. The branches of the trees like the arms of the rider reaching him. The croaking of the frogs like the grunts of the ghost horse. After a couple of startles, Ishabod felt safer than ever. There was no ghost. He turned around to go back to Katrina's house to prove his bravery when a shadow stood in his way. A huge black horse with red eyes cut him off, and on top, a man with a long cloak and a sword glinting in the moonlight. <laughs> Though he couldn't see his face, Ishabod knew he was not from the village. A shiver ran down his back as the horse stood on his two hind legs. The rider drew his sword, and with his other hand he tore off his head which caught the fire and revealed the face carved in the pumpkin. Ishabod's heart stopped and he whipped his donkey hard to run out of the valley. He wasn't far from town, but the black horse was clearly faster than his poor ride. He felt the heart of the flaming pumpkin on the back of his neck. Even the edge of the sword came close on a couple of occasions, but Ishabod could already see the glow of the moon over the river and the bridge through the trees. He rode uphill, and by a little, he made it over the bridge. The spirit didn't cross the bridge, but to Ichabod's horror, the horseman threw his flaming head straight at him. It was so fast that he failed to avoid it, and it exploded in his face, causing a great rumble. The next morning, no one could find Ichabod. All they found was his donkey, his hat, and a mysterious shattered pumpkin at the entrance of the bridge. Do you think the horseman is real and killed Ichabod? Or maybe he went crazy in that valley? If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you in the next one.